I don't know what your needs are personally for your family for your for your work for in relationships but one thing we know is prayer is the answer for all your problems we don't have all solutions but we know we believe in the power of prayer amen so when i don't i think it's lesser somewhere who said that i just love that when all the possibilities seem gone that god will open impossibilities from heaven man so if you are in this place and you think that all the possibilities naturally are gone then our god is going to open impossibilities from heaven man so even if we are over here and you know we want we want we have dreams and you know whether it's individually whether you know it's corporately but the only solution only answer for that is to pray and you know what prayer is it's also humility because so many times people cannot pray because they are they have pride you know prayer is like coming like a child and saying lord i cannot do it but only you can do it and so many times we even do not know what we want to pray for you know we don't know the perfect will of the lord that's why we love to pray in the spirit so you know i'm just speaking about the dna you know it's so important to have the dna so we are taking this extended meeting i mean we're going to i don't know if like priti said if you're getting hungry it's fine but you know we're going to take some but most important thing in the dna is for us it's prayer because we know that we don't have answers god has answers but hey man so you know sometimes people find it difficult to pray at home you can start praying over here even in the short service hey man so because you know that your answers are coming today man breakthroughs are coming you know and so i just want to pray in the spirit i'm going to lead you in prayer if you want to just start praying with me you know and and you need to surrender what you want for this season you want to even write down you can write down we you know it's not just praying we believe in fasting and praying amen and i we believe even 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 in this season breakthroughs are going to come amen whatever is impossible is going to break mountains are coming down you know jesus said you know you know if there's mountains in front of you you need to speak to them if you have faith as little as a mustard seed those mountains you speak to those mountains those mountains will move amen so it's not like we have everything perfect but we know one thing our god is perfect our god has answers for every problem so we're just going to start praying even right now bronte kere veres tene kere ana kaura if you want to pray if you don't know what to pray in spirit it just can pray in whatever language but even as you're praying what's happening is things are breaking rebe se kere veren deri ana kaura santo la veres tene kere vere Rifro na mana kura vara Santo lo vraste rebere sekere Shekere verendiri na kura mana Rebe sekere verendere Santo la vraste na kura Rofro sto no kura vara stene kere vere Ribri na kura mana Santo la vara stene kere vere Rifro na mana kura varande re 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 se ke re 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 Santa ola ral bala raba sa kura vara re fe se ke re 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 Ronte vere stene ke ri ana kura Santa ola ral bala raba sa kura vara She ke re 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 stene ke ri Rifro na mana kura mana Oh father we thank you that mountains are coming down right now in the name of Jesus We thank you Lord it's melting right now in the name of Jesus. Oh Father we thank you Lord for breakthroughs that are happening. We cover this place with your precious blood oh Lord. Oh Father we thank you that the church is moving forward. We thank you that you will build the church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We thank you that no weapon forms against us or the church or the leadership will anyway prosper because this is an inheritance of the children of God and we speak to those weapons lord oh, those those words which have spoken against us lord in the in the name of jesus that will not stand against the church Amen. the church will move forward in the name of jesus bronte keri ana kaura mana santo la varas tene kere vere refre vere se kere vere andere 
Santolo Rebesse Gere Shake Gere Vedendere Santola Varastene Gere Refresse Gere Vere Riprona Mana Santola Ralvala Rebresiana Co Rifrostono Brontestere Refresiana Co Ramana Rifro Bronte Vere Rebesse Gere Vere Shake your river, river, shake your river, river, shake your river. Santo lo, river, see an akora vara. Shake your river, and the river, river, shake your river, river, shake your river. Santo la varastana kora mana. Rivro na mana kora varastene kere. Shake your river, river, shake your river, river, Siana Cora, Santola Ralvela Rabasa Cora Vara, Frontestene Kerever, river, Siana Cora Vara, Refresse Kerever and Derevere, Shikoro Stono Cora, Frontever, river, shake your river, river, shake your river, river, Siana Cora. Santo la Ralvela Rabasa Cora Vara Rebesse Gere Vere Bronte Vere Che Gere Vere Rebesse Gere Vere Rifrona Mana Cora Vara Santo la Ralvela Rabasa Cora Vara Bronte Vere Rebesse Gere Vere Shake your river and the river, river, shake your river. Santo la Ralvola Stona Cora Vara. Run to it. Lord, we pray, Lord, let there be day and night worship, Lord. Let there be night and day prayer and worship in this house. Lord, we want to build a sanctuary, Lord, which where we'll raise up worshipers, Lord. Oh, we cry out, Lord. We cry out. We cry out, we cry out right now in the name of Jesus. Bronti Anastana Kaura Mana Shekere Rebre Shekere Verende Rebere Bronti Verestene Kere Vere Rifrona Mana Kaura Vara Santa Ola Ralvala Rebe Shekere Vere Shekere Verende Rebere Break out in this place, Lord. We pray for a break out in this place. Break out with healings, Lord. Break out with miracles, Lord. Oh, we pray for breakthroughs this morning. In the name of Jesus. We pray that you push every barriers right down. Santo la Ralvara Rabasakuravara. Let the anointing break every yoke right now. Shake your river, river, Siana Kora Mana. Santo la Ralvela Robroso Koravara. Rifrona Mana Kerevere. Shake your river. Ronte Vere, River Sekerevere. Santo la Ralvela Rabasa Koravara. Refe se ke revere ribrona mana kaura mana Bronte ke revere rebe se ke revere ende revere Right now we're going to agree we're going to agree for whatever the situation in your life is it can be healings it can be miracles it can be financial breakthroughs we're going to agree that in this month in this month of July that as a church because you know when we pray right now the miracles are going to happen. We're going to agree because you know the word declares that when we two or three agree what will be believed right here on earth will be confirmed in heaven. Amen. So what, what we what we are going to believe together. You know if you want to hold the person next to you and you know, agree in prayer right now. We're going to agree as a church. We are a family. 
You know, the power which is working over here is the same power which rose Jesus from the dead, which is every power which is above every principality and powers of darkness. Listen, the spirit of infirmity is bound. The spirit of infirmity is bound. So you, you need healing right now. We're going to pray for healings because, you know, every sickness which is caused by spirit of infirmity, that does not have power. We take authority right now in the name of Jesus. And we speak healing right now. We pray the spirit of infirmity will be will come down. We pray for the, the familiar spirit, which is causing obstruction right now to stay away. The spirit of heaviness to leave right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to the spirit of heaviness to leave. Every oppression, every insomnia, let it go. Let it go right now. Even people watching live right now on live stream, let healing start breaking out. We pray for the strong men to come down. Every oppressive spirit, deaf and dumb spirit, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that Jesus Christ is the Lord over this house. We take authority right now. And we speak freedom in this place. We speak liberty in this place. Let's give Jesus a clap offering. Come on. Let's give him a shout offering. Come on. No. Jesus! Come on, let's do better. Jesus! When Jericho walls came down, it came because of the praises of his people. You know, the Bible says Jehoshaphat was def- was won the victory because of the praises of his people. Listen, we as a church, we have power. Our power is to praise. When we praise, miracles happen. When we worship, miracles happen. Long time ago, one man of God told me, he said, the church which moves forward is a worshiping church. The church which moves forward is a praying church. Amen. Listen, you know, the devil is not scared about, you know, how well I preach the word or someone else preaches the word. You know, what matters is when we worship, when we pray, he trembles. You know, we want to be men and women of God who pray. Amen. We are saints, but we, we we are people of prayer. Because you know what? That shows humility. You know, that shows we can come down because when we come down on our knees, when we get down, when what we're doing is we're saying we cannot do it, God, you come. Amen. Listen, this is part of the vision. Vision of the house is to be people of prayer, is to be people of praise, people of worship, because we know that's, that's what is going to, that's, God, that's, that's what God's called us to do in this city. You know, when we do that, things are going to happen supernaturally. We don't need to figure everything out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a clap offering once more. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory this morning, Lord. Thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Those of you who have not got this, this is a flyer for the weekend. You know, we have uh, three nights in South Hall. And uh, even before I start, I want to share about the vision of the house. And, and then Preeti is going to come and, and share after that. So one thing which is important for us is even as people watching, we are one house, whether we are in Ilford or South Hall. And we believe that God's called us to be one house. I'm going to speak about different things you know, where, where God's placing us. But as, as a part of the family, I encourage every one of you to be part of this. Amen. We are, what we're doing is we uh, believe that God's going to break out in Ilford as well as in South Hall. So we are, we are, we are going onto the streets and we have three nights of meetings. The main reason for those nights of meetings is we believe even as we press in, over there in prayer and worship, things are going to shift in South Hall. Amen. It's not, it's not about just about how many people get saved. 
you know, it's about us pressing in because we know that heavens are going to open as we are there. Listen, God's anointed us. How many of you believe that? You know, how many of you believe that God wants to give us London? Amen. If not just London, but I'm saying us as a church, we want to focus right now, even in time, in breaking atmosphere right here in London. Amen. So even as, so if you have time, if you're free, you know, come and, uh, come and be a part of this. So this is the flyers for that. Flyers are down. Uh, it's three nights. That is the 12th, 13th, and 14th from 7 to 9. Our team are going to be going out on the streets before that. If you want more information, you can ask Satya. Satya is over here. Satya, can you lift up your hands? So, uh, yeah, give him a hand. So, come on. And he's, uh, uh, they, he, they have a lot of team uh, even taken leave, you know, for the uh, three days. I think we're going out uh, on, on, I think on Friday, Thursday, Friday, and even on Saturday. So get involved. Amen. Last year, we saw, I think it was last year, we saw so many miracles on the streets in South Hall. On the streets. Listen, listen, we believe that God wants to break out. But unless we go out and we pray for the sick, people are not going to get healed. Come on. So many times people are not getting, so many times people say, you know what, people are not getting healed. How many people did you pray for? No, I didn't pray for anybody. And listen, I believe that, you know, and listen, I, I mean, I'm, I'm serious about it, but I believe God wants to use you to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to break through atmosphere. But for that, we need to start praying. Amen? Hallelujah. Come on. People are not understanding my jokes, I think. I love the, I love the uh, message, Paul, you put up on Facebook. I just love it. I love every saying which is there. He put up all the sayings of uh, some of the great men of God and women of God about prayer. For me, I, like, I love every one of that. And, and uh, I think I've read a lot of that. But, you know, when I read it this morning and when he put it up, it just so encouraged me. So, you know, listen, listen, I love... You know, we love to pray. Come on. You can do better. Amen. Let's just close our eyes. Oh, Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for each and every one over here. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your ministry. We thank you that you're going to come and touch your people right now. Lord, we pray that, Jesus, we come. And just come and touch your people. Breathe upon us in a fresh way, Lord. Lord, I pray for a fresh vision to be imparted this morning for this new season. And I pray that take us from strength unto strength and from glory unto glory, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you're building your house, you're building the church, Lord. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. Isaiah 60 verse 22. The book of Isaiah, verse 60, verse 22. I'm going to speak about the vision. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. You know, one of the prophetic words you know, we got when, even just before we started the church, this is, I'm talking about 2008 and 9, he said, Lord said, you know, I, the Lord, I, the Lord, shall make a one become a thousand and a small one a strong nation. And I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. A little one shall become a thousand. A little one shall become a thousand. Say that, you know, I want you to say that. Little one, little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. You know, when I personally came to the Lord years back, I'm talking about 1996. That's, that's like a long time, 22 years. 
you know, struggling in all the areas of my life. Today, if ever, if ever, you know, someone had told of what's going to happen in the next 22 years, I could not have ever believed. But this is not just for me, it's for everyone. Lord, you know, always allows you to grow. You know, if you stand with the Lord, if you're standing, you know, if you're walking with the Lord, He is going to make us grow. So one of the most important things for us as a family is, you know, the reason why we are here is to see people grow. You know, when people grows, church grows. You know, <laughs> the city grows, the nation grows. What matters is not what your situation, where you are now, what matters is whether you have Jesus or not, and are you part of what God wants? Are, are you part of, are you willing to be discipled? Are you willing to allow God to, to uh, are, you well, are you willing to allow the Lord to minister to you? Listen, I know Ram is there over here. What matters is not what Ram is today, but where, where is Ram going to be 10 years from now? Or Jitin, or James and Jerry and Rachel. And, see, what matters is not where you are now. What's the vision? Where are you going to be 10 years from now? Listen, so many times, like Preeti said, we start seeing when people, you know, when they do the small things right, when they come in, you know, after three years, you can't recognize where they are. After five years, you can't recognize. After 10 years, you can't recognize because you're going to grow. Listen, one of the most important things for us is, Lord told us, I believe very clearly that, you know, it's not just to build Capstone. Capstone is just one local church. I believe God's called us for this nation and the nations. Amen. Amen. So, so many times people misunderstand when unless you have a family, you cannot touch nations. Come on. And God's called us to touch nations. God gave us a vision of a billion souls. He didn't give us a billion vision of 10,000 souls. Listen, I remember Papa Che, I was with him in Amsterdam two weeks back. I really, I, got, I was really touched by that. He said, he told, he said, I realized long time back, if I was a very, very good pastor, I could maximum pastor 150 people. If I was a very good pastor, I could pastor 150 people. So I decided that's not what God's called me. He's called me for much more. He said, I'm going to pastor pastors or, or, you know, God said that so that who can multiply and do what God's called them to do. And I, I believe when we are transitioning from a local church into an apostolic center. So one of that part is that we want to encourage people to do what God's called them to do. But listen, a lot of times I believe what what church looks like now or ministry looks like now is not what it looks like, what it looked like 10 years back or 20 years back or 30 years back. It's totally different because we have a different time. It's so important to understand times and seasons. Today, through your mobile phone, you can reach more people across nations than 15 years back. You can disciple nations just with your mobile phone you know, then what you could do, you know, 20 years back. So, you know, what matters is, is not, is not what something was done, how it was done 20 years back. Today, God's strategy for discipling nations is totally different. Come on. So, we can't look back and say, you know what, this is how it was done 20 years back, so you need to do the same thing now. There are principles, the same principles of prayer. There's principles of fasting. There's principles of the word, that the Holy Spirit. All those are so important. And we know that that's important. Listen, I'm, I'm not saying that there, there's any change in that. We need to get baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. We need a life of prayer. We need fasting for breakthroughs. All those are same. But that doesn't mean the way we do things needs to be the same as what, what happened 20 years back. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you understand what I'm trying to say? So I believe we as a ministry, we as a church, we are in transition. You know, we need to transition to what, for what God is doing now. This is a now season. 
So we need to have a fresh vision for the next five years. You know, and, and people even watching on, on, I know people are going to watch this. And so I want to clearly say, we are not here just to build Capstone Church. Come on. We are here to build the kingdom. You know, Jesus never said any time, you know, when you build, I believe when you build the kingdom, you know, we are, that's what God's called us. And we, God's called everyone. So it's not on one name, you know. And, and I believe that as we build the kingdom, we are going to see that people are going to grow. And how, how do we build the kingdom? When people, people grow. Hallelujah. So if we can't help people grow, then there's a problem. You know, if we are not seeing growth in people's lives, I'm talking about spiritually, I'm talking about in all spirit, soul, and body. So, so many times, why people do not grow is they don't want to be discipled. Come on, are, are you understanding what I'm trying to say? It's, it's, you know, when you don't want to grow, you're not going to grow. It's simple. Come on. Hallelujah. And I mean, I'm saying it once more. You can only grow if you want to grow. Only if you want to grow. Like Preeti said, you know what? God gave, God, God told that I want to raise up millionaires. But if you don't want to be a millionaire, you're not going to be a millionaire. Whatever she does, she can never be. I'm not talking about even a millionaire or a billionaire. I'm not talking about just with money. I'm talking about even in the spirit. You know, what matters is whether you want it or not. Listen, I believe that even when I'm speaking today, I feel that what matters is even if 12 people can catch this, I feel, believe you're going to shake nations. Come on. I'll speak to this side. I don't think that side understood. If 12 people can understand what I'm trying to say, you're going to shake nations. Listen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can run a company and touch nations than having a church of 10,000 people. Can you, can you believe that? You can, have one, you can be a CEO of one company and touch nations and then having a church of 10,000 people. Because 10,000 people are only going to touch 10,000. But if you have a company which makes 100 million, you can touch nations by, by supporting so many pastors, so many orphans, reaching out and doing crusades and discipling thousands at a time. Are you understanding what I'm trying to say? And some people are understanding, some people are not understanding. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about vision now. Because God's told us to reach a billion souls. You know, sometime back, you know, I thought when, we, when God first gave me the dream of reaching a billion souls, I said, oh, you know what, we need to go to India. We can't do anything over here. And India's got 1.4 billion and China's got 1.4 billion. So let's go there because everything is finished. But that's, that was in the natural. That was, I mean, that was in the natural. But what I'm trying to say is God's giving supernatural strategies to reach a billion. Amen. So sometimes people come in and say, you know what? Oh, oh, you know, uh, you want to see everyone over here. I don't believe that everyone is called to be a part of Capstone. Listen, and we are not here. We don't believe that because you know why? Capstone is not the end. We believe God's called us to touch nations. You know, we believe we want to see souls saved and we want to see churches set on fire. That's God's heart. Amen. Even in this city, we are hosting conferences, not just for our church. For this, it's for the city and the nation. Amen. So we are transitioning from a local church to an apostolic center. What it means is, I'm just, you know, Preeti is going to say some of the practical things, but I'm going to say the vision of, of uh, I mean, Jesus, of, of what I feel at this stage, what God is doing. Amen. When, you know, listen, even, even to understand what it means so many times to have an apostolic center, we need a local church. A local church is very important, but it doesn't, it can be a small church. We can be a hundred people church. Listen, and I believe that Ilford and, Caps, Ilford and South Hall are one church. 
you know and we don't want to plan many many capsules that's not our heart i remember you know i think we we have told that we are planning a church in in hong kong so other day uh, jitin asked me he said i said jitin i don't think we should name it capstone because we don't want it to become a denomination because we are a, we are an apostolic center i said you name it what god's giving you and we are we are going to ordain you we're going to ordain you as, and you and pratip as pastors and you got to be under the network but you name what 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 god's telling you because you know we don't want it to be a denomination it's not all about capstone it's about the kingdom amen, amen. i believe god's transitioning us into into a movement and i believe god that's what god's doing you know yeah, when papa che was here one of the some of the things i believe uh, i believe that the connection even with apostolic is releasing us into 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 the next realm so he told he said years back peter wagner and cindy jacobs told him when he was young he said uh he was very young he said god's call you to touch nations by 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 fathering pastors and uh, he said i couldn't understand it and i know that in the natural that couldn't have happened he said supernaturally god gave grace just that way even for us we know that god's transitioning us because you know we can be very you, you can think that how naturally it's going to happen it's not going to happen naturally it's going to happen supernaturally so god's giving us a grace to do things we believe which will touch nations and for that i know that there's going to be supernatural grace which will come upon there's going to be there's going to be apostles raised up there's going to be prophets there's going to be pastors and teachers and and evangelists and businessmen and and all this is going to be raised up when we also believe that ministries are going to come and be based over here and we want to be we want to we want to encourage it come on hallelujah we want to encourage it so it's not just about one church i believe that when god's calling us he's saying in this season that there's going to be supernatural strategies and there's going to be supernatural uh, you know uh, supernatural revelation on how to go about doing things so that you know we can we can move and transition this into an apostolic center mark the book of mark hallelujah chapter 5 no chapter 2 I'll, i'll i'll say i'll start at chapter 2 mark chapter 2 was 22 it says no one puts new wine into old wine skins or else a new wine bursts the wine skins the wine is spilled and the wine skins are ruined but new wine must be put into new wine skins Listen I believe we believe so strongly in this if you have to flourish there has to be a structure I believe the new wine is what God's going to pour out in this season but unless the wine skin is prepared the new wine cannot be put in in the in the wine skin so what we really believe I mean I just love the prophetic word Jeremy gave James you know even as I'm sit, starting I believe that when he gave the word to you james it just it, i believe that that word has changed a lot of things in your life and i believe that is i believe i mean i i always felt that you know what oh that's something which is which we should be doing but i just didn't understand you know so when jeremy gave the word that's part of what god's that god's calling you and that has to be supernatural and i know that you will need to study a lot of things to get to there but what matters is that through it doing that you're going to reach nations and you're going to also provide a structure for many people to come in and reach nations is not just for him is not just for them or or any of our team but many people are going to see that's why a lot of times we need to provide a structure where people can come in so that they they can be they can flourish and they can also allow others to flourish and i believe that there are three generations in the structure i believe the fathers and i believe nick and linda you know you guys and and michael you know your your god brought us to to got you to god brought you to us to be fathers in this move and i believe 
We believe so strongly there's three generations in this. There's the fathers, even Paul and Mandy, even you guys feel that so strongly. Y'all, all of you were touched in Toronto, you know, in 94, I mean, in that move, basically. And I believe that move is so important for what God's doing in this move, next move. So it's important to have fathers who've already, who already been, you know, who have already experienced the move of God. And we, are, we believe that that's a very important aspect of what God's doing. And we want our generation and we want the next generation. So there's the fathers, our generation. So there's three generations. I believe that three generations, and that's what's so instrumental in what God's going to be doing now to touch nations in this move. Amen. So, and, and, and we believe that we have to provide a structure for all people to flourish over here. And we want to do that. So we are not here to plant 100 churches or 1,000 churches or whatever. That's not what God's calling us. God's calling us to create a structure so that we know that we can disciple nations from this base. Amen. So if God's called someone to have a father heart ministry and you want a base over here, they can go across nations and we know that we know we need more prayer and worship over here. We know we need to have more teaching over here. I mean, I mean schools over here. We need to have conferences over here, which can have equip different, different ministries to do what God's called them to do. You know, we know that we need to raise a businessman over here. No, that's why we started the business forum because we know that that's going to touch nations. You know, we know. So we need to have a family we want, which where we can provide a safe surrounding for them to flourish so that they can do what God's called them to do. Come on. How many of you are understanding what I'm trying to say? Amen. Is it going above your head? Amen. I believe even people watching, this is even, even, in, even people are recording this. So it's important to speak the vision because unless you speak the vision, you know, people are not going to understand where the church or ministry is going. So unless you have a vision, you cannot run with it. So many times people come in and say, and tell us what to do. Because unless... Unless they know where the ministry is going, no, we, you know, we, they cannot run with it. And I believe that when you know where the ministry is going, you can run with it. You know where you can, you can be a part of it. And I believe that you know, in this season, God's going to put align people into the right places so that we can flourish in what God's doing. Amen. If suppose you want to do something, Unless you come and tell us on what God's calling you to do, you know, we are not going to understand it sometimes. So it's important you come and communicate with us. You come and let us know. So many times, you know, people come a few times over here and then we don't see them. I'm, I'm just speaking my heart out. But the reason they've left, you don't know why they've left. Now, if you don't have a problem with people leaving, so many times, you know, you know they may not fit in here. But we have a problem and we don't know. When we don't know who's with us and who's not with us. So when we understand the vision and what God, where, where we are going, so we know who we are building because we know that God's called us to reach billion. Amen. Amen. So we know what's happening. Suppose, you know, Linda and Nick have a ministry, a father heart ministry. We know that that ministry is powerful to, to, for inner healing and, and what God's calling them to do. We know that they can, they, they're part of a structure where they're, they're going to reach nations. Amen. Even in this season, they're going to read, and same with Michael, because I don't, I don't think many people understand prayer more than Michael, and I believe God's going to use Michael in this season, even, even to disciple people in prayer. Yeah. Amen. So we know, we know that it's important to have, and we know that our team over here, whether James and Jerry, you know, Rachel and Jitin, I believe, Jimin and Sari, I believe, Matthew and Leah, I believe that God's calling us in this season to build to build something not just for us as a church but for the nations come on come on I, I need better response hallelujah need a better response come on it's more exciting than that Revival is what is going to shake nations. Nothing else. But to contain revival, you need a strong structure. Without a structure, you know, it can get very messy. And so many times, 
revival, you know, I think it was Randy Clark who said that, he said he's only seen three churches all over the world who've been able to steward revival. And he's been to thousands of churches from 94. He said there were only three churches. And that really surprised me. Because if three, only three churches which could steward revival. Because you know why what happens? A lot of times when revival gets messy, people want to stop it. Or they want to control it. They don't want to allow the Holy Spirit to move because it can get messy. Or see for us, we believe God's called us to touch this nation and for that revival is the only way and we want to see souls saved we want to see the poor coming into the church come on you know we want to see because revival is always among the poor i believe reformation is among the rich so we have to see the souls new souls coming into the church you know whether it's this church or some other church and that has to happen week in and week out if God's called us in this nation, it has to be that every week we are seeing souls saved and people discipled, whether it's through whatever way it is. And I believe that you know, this time, this is a season for God's providing a structure for that. So what we're going to be doing, some of the things is we're going to be ordaining pastors. You know, even in the local church, we're going to be ordaining leaders. We're going to be putting a structure in the next six months. We're going to be speaking to them. So we want to build a family. You know, even if you have 30 people in that family, we want to build that family because we know that the 30 people are going to touch nations. You know, it was John Wesley who said this. He said, give me 12 con people consecrate unto, unto God and I will touch nations. You know, see, listen, there are more than 12 here. If you say yes, I know we can touch nations. Yes. Amen. Amen. I, I, you know, so... Uh, let's just close in prayer and I want to I invite Preeti to come. Oh, Father, Lord, even right now, we thank you for today. We thank you for each and every one over here. We pray, Lord, that for, for clarity of vision, Lord. Lord, even as, even as you've spoken the word, Lord, Lord, we pray that let there be clarity in people's hearts about what God's calling on what you're calling them to do, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, for, for breakthroughs, for, for a fresh vision. Lord, for, for a clarity in the people's calling, Father. Lord, I thank you for the fivefold ministry. I thank you for every area, Lord, of their lives. Lord, I pray even for Capstone, Father, and for all the ministries which you're calling us to do, Father. Lord, we pray that you break forth, Lord, in a new way in this season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. Um, hi. Okay, so um, I just want to um, thank everybody for um, serving in this house. Those who have, um, this house has not been built by a single hand. It is by hands together. Um, I just want to actually, the Lord gave me a uh, few prophetic words. I'm going to just release that. Um, if I call out your name, if you would just stand up and, um, um, and that would be great. Lorna, did you know you were going to get a prophetic word? You knew? You knew it, didn't you? Yeah? So um, this is. This is what the Lord said, and um, I love the fact that when you were up here on worship, all the, the prophetic words were triggered, actually, through this. You were just there, and you had a thought with the Lord. Um, you had a question to the Lord, and it has to do with breakthrough, you know, because there was a moment you, there's a lot of dreams that you have, and it looks like there's a full stop, or there's a halt in these dreams, and you just lifted your eyes to the Lord and, you know, um, you, you were hesitating to whether to trust him or not. You know, and the Lord told me to tell you that he will show himself as the God of the impossible. You know, and, and in fact, this season has shocked you. Okay, the last season that you've had has shocked you. But the thing is, this shock will actually prepare you for the season ahead because you would not have known 
the discomfort that the enemy can bring, okay, and the faith that God has instilled in you, okay, to shift. You actually surprised yourself. You know, you surprised yourself with the, the, the strength of your backbone. And that backbone, the Lord says, is felt. You know, the bones of your backbone is spelled F-A-I-T-H. Because faith is your backbone, okay? And God, it does not matter what the enemy has thrown, will throw, okay? Because he hates you, okay? But your voice will shift nations. Your voice will bring heaven on earth, Okay, and he will, you will know him. Some people call him father. Some people call him savior. You will call him the God of the impossible. Okay, and that's what's going to be the, you will step into places and impossibility and you will say dates. This is going to be the anointing. You will say dates. Five weeks, this will happen. It will happen. You will say six days, this will happen, this will happen. You will say that the spirit of the Lord is on the situation and this sea will split, will split and it will happen. Okay? And this is, this is who God is. And you love that song, Psalm 46, is it? Is it the, the what is it, Psalm 46? Lord of hosts? Okay? What does that say? That, that, what is that, the, the chorus? Yes. You know, that is your words. So you will see that this is what the Lord says. Um, praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand. Um, Leona, um, Leona, the Lord says, did you know you're going to get a word? Okay. Because <laughs> she had her phone ready. I love that. It's a con right now. It's like, this is, this is, <laughs> she had her phone ready. Um, the, the, as um, the Lord showed me this light and it was actually a small light. Okay. And it's a light, a small light actually surrounded by a lot of darkness. And that light sometimes looks like it's flickering. And people from the outside might look at the light and say, oh, is it going to go out? Is it going to go out? Is it going to go out? And so many times it looked like it's going to go out. It's going to go out. But actually, what's behind the scene is that the light is increasing in strength. The light somehow from its core is having oil added to it, and the light is increasing in strength. And then suddenly from that, that I heard this roar. I, I say I saw a roar. I saw this roar, like Aslan, you know, like, um, um, you know, Aslan, um, uh, the, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, Narnia, okay? Um, uh, Aslan, that, and that roar released a fresh breath. <laughs> and that fresh breath, Actually, um, what happened was that roar sent the fire into different places, okay? And the light, it spread. You may think you're standing alone. You may think that sometimes it looked like it was going to burn out. But actually, you're going to see an increase in the people who stand with you. Even you know the area of the darkness that you have. But you're going to see an increase and you love the songs about the lion roaring, okay? Why? Because it actually testifies within your spirit. It actually testifies within your spirit. And you're going to see actually the flame spreading even within your family. You're going to see, even within your family, you're going to see revival roar. You're going to see a new, new, new season. And this fire is going to spread, okay? And so I just speak that over you. This is identify with your spirit. Uh huh. Uh huh. The lion. All right. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> See, the Lord has so much depth. Does this identify Lorna? What? Um, yes. Yes. Just say yes so that people understand. Um, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Lolita's daughter? Is that your daughter? Yes, you darling. What's your name? Joanna. Okay, would you stand up, darling? I saw um, the Lord actually giving you two, it's a breakthrough in work and in education. Okay? And um, um, the, the Lord said, and the Lord showed me this block. 
it's sort of like an art deco block. So I know that it was made in the 60s and the 70s or something. And, um, and the Lord said this. He said, there is a prosperity, okay, that, um, so um, he's going to give you a breakthrough in work and education, okay? These are the things. Then, okay, uh, he showed me the block and then he said this. He said that there is a prosperity that your grandparents had or should have had that did not come, come past, but you're going to carry uh, an uh, inheritance, a blessing, okay? In the season to come, you will find that things come easy. A lot of this so far has been tough, you know? But suddenly, you'll see that what you should have covered in, say, in five minutes or in five hours, you'll start covering it in five minutes. You'll see a, a push of the Lord and a prosperity that comes, an ease, and when that ease comes, um, it's, it, and it's a generational blessing that is coming upon you. And it's going to come from all directions. So I just speak that over you and just lift up your hands. Father Lord, I just pray, Father Lord, for your honor, Father Lord. Lord, I just pray, Father Lord, for a generational blessing to be upon her, Father. And I speak blessing over her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, hallelujah. Is it all right if I continue? So Bennett Achacha, I call him Achacha, his name is Bennett because um, that means elder brother. Um, we honor you here in this place. And the Lord, Bennett Achacha, the Lord actually gave me Isaiah 42, verse 7 for you. And it says here, so just lift up your hands and pray in tongues. Now, those of you wondering why we pray in tongues, one is that it edifies us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second thing is that um, it actually allows us to pray what the Spirit is praying over, this, over the situation. Okay? And um, receive these prophetic words as interpretation of tongues. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, ben Tachacha, the Lord said Isaiah 42, 7 over you. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison. Um, and those who sit in darkness from the prison's house. And I believe you have a very evangelistic call, Ben Tachacha. You have a call to actually release people who are in prison. Meaning there is, a, there is the prison of captivity, the prison of bondage, the prison of mental anguish. And that is an anointing. But you think that it stops there. You have a calling to call people. And that is a very evangelistic anointing. But you think it stops there. because, And it does not. Because the Lord says, I have laid my healing ministry, my gifts of healing upon you. That you will see blind. You will see the blind see. You will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. The thing is, God has given you the eyes of a seer and the hands of the anointed. And so, so, I, uh, so I release you right now to pray for the sick. You don't need anybody's permission. And unless you start doing it, you're not going to see. So the Lord says, you will see. And one of the things you will see is you will see blind eyes open. You will see blind eyes open. And I speak this not only in the natural. You will see the blind eyes open, but you will also see spiritual blindness open. This is what you're going to see in this time. And I just read that scripture over you one time. Uh, verse 6 on us. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. And I keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the Gentiles, the Lord says, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison and those who sit in darkness from prison's house but I tell you something you may see in this season that the enemy comes in like a flood but there is a standard that God is going to raise don't look at the flood because when you will walk through that flood and if you will be unscathed you will be untouched whatever the enemy throws at you in this season he cannot touch you the floods will pass come on everybody say the floods will pass the floods will pass the floods will pass. And we look forward to seeing what God will do in your life. Thank you so much. Bless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anish, I have the Lord says uh, over you. Uh, Isaiah 29. I love the prophet Isaiah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 29, 17 to 18 is what the Lord says over you. And he says this. Is it not yet a very little thing to Lebanon? 
will be turned into a fruitful land and the fruitful field will be esteemed, esteemed as a forest. In that day, the deaf shall hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see the obscurity, and, uh, will see out of obscurity and out of darkness. Anish, the Lord is saying to you that, um, that those who have not been hearing the word of the Lord from you will be hearing it now. Amen. Those who have been deaf to the word will hear the words of this book. That's what you will see. And the Lord says that even in India, back home where you're from, that things, that there's a season that you have had things hidden from you. There are things that God will reveal to you and you will see breakthrough. You will see breakthrough in this land. That darkness that en enveloped your, 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 your Tharavada, your home, will actually be broken at this time. And the light of God's word and the light of his deliverance will shine into your house and your land and your house will be released into that next level of blessing and the deaf will hear and the blind will see. And this we just release over you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Faba, the Lord has a word for you. Oh, Ruba Mama Mashiare. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Ruba Mama 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 Shambare Araba Mama Shiare. Hallelujah. Oh, how many of you love this young woman? Hallelujah. Faber, the Lord is saying Proverbs 22, verse 12 over you. And he says, the righteous. I'm on the wrong. Oh, hallelujah. Proverbs 22, verse 12 over you. And the, the eyes of the Lord preserve knowledge. And he overthrows the words of the faithless. Now, over the season, over these last few years, you have heard many words spoken over you. And you, and these words have been the words of the faithless. And God says, every negative word that has been said over you, God will overthrow it. The Lord says, you have the anointing of a queen. And it is a ruler's anointing. And therefore, you will think different. You have, you're, you have an anointing of, of knowledge. And that's why you find things are different. You will see the thinking of somebody and say, that's not how I think about it. But God says, I will preserve the things that I've spoken to you. And you are called not to be a corner Christian. You're called to be a ruling Christian. And let me tell you, and let the parents hear this. God has placed a divine protection over this, his daughter. And the divine protection of the Lord is upon you. Okay? No one can touch you. You don't need to worry. Okay? And this is to the, um, the, the parents. No one can touch this child. There is a fire around her. But one thing you have to do, my, my daughter, is you cannot harden your heart. Make sure your heart is soft. Keep it soft to the knowledge of God. Grow in the God that you know. Hallelujah. And we bless you. We look forward to seeing what God will do in your life. Hallelujah. Karen. Hi. Are you all excited? Is this, is this, isn't this wonderful? I love the Lord. Karen, this is what the Lord says. The Lord says, Psalm 119, verse 89 over you. And, um, and it says here, um, when I received the word for you, my hands started shaking. It's still shaking. Hallelujah. Um, oh, my, just lift up your hands in this place. There's so much weight on what he's saying over you, Karen. Psalm 119. Verse 89 says this, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. And this is what the Lord says, Karen. The Lord's, the words God has spoken over you, over your family, over your generations. God says it will come to pass. 
God will fulfill what he has said. Many times, especially over these last two to three years, you have cried to him and asked him, and you have actually been burdened sometimes. It's the burden you feel on your shoulders sometimes. Um, and, and this is what the Lord says. This is what I heard heaven say. He says, yet. And then he put a break. And then he said, the time is coming. The time is coming. The time is coming. The time is coming. And I heard all of heaven say, yes. 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 So I am now prophesying over you that every prophetic word that you've heard, every, every, every promise that you've held on to, it is now yes. Now yes. It is a yeah and amen from God. It is a yeah. It is a yeah. It is a yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, everybody together. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is. See, the whole church is in agreement. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is a yes and amen from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, I know the biryani waits. I just want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Oh, Ruba Mama. It's not here yet, so there's no biryani. Oh, Ruba Mama. Sheare Araba. Oh, Arame. Deliver your name, mighty hand, now stretched up. You are the God who saves. You know, Donald, the Lord is telling you, the Lord is telling you, you expected God to actually, actually, um, Shift things for you in a flash. Ta-da! The master of the universe. You expected flash. Ta-da! But that's not what, how he does it in your life. You are slowly seeing him establish you. He who began the good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of Jesus Christ. The Lord tells me you are not an afterthought. You are not a second class citizen. There is only one class of citizen in heaven. And that's heaven's ambassador. And that's who you are. And so now, you know, if anybody's just anywhere near him, or even anyone can just run, I want you to go hug him and tell him that he is one with the family. Come on, come on, give, give the Lord a hand. <laughs> hallelujah I don't know if this is the church you're used to you know I feel I, I feel Benny needs a hug can someone give Benny a hug over here <laughs> If you need a hug, raise your hand. Someone will give you a hug. Okay, Rihanna needs a hug. Girls, give Rihanna, Rihanna a hug. Come on. If you need a hug, God is... Oh, there are free of hugs available in church. I can hear Benita Chacha saying, I need a hug. <laughs> Someone give Cam a hug. I think Akash needs a hug. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Ah. Uh, so welcome to family and we are in for a new season hallelujah um, and as Rakesh spoke about the overall vision um, this house was in a transition you know when you shift gears in a car you feel like you're losing momentum do you know that when you're shifting gears I know I use a lot of car examples okay uh, Tushan's looking at me like you're speaking my language. But has anyone ever pre pressed the accelerator when, if you've got a, not a uh, automatic, but in a manual, when you're shifting gears, what happens when you press the accelerator? Nothing. It just makes a lot of noise. Am I right? 
So we were in a period of transition. We were shifting gears. But now the gear has fallen into place. Hallelujah. We have now shifted. And we're now, if when we press the accelerator now, we're going to gain momentum. Hallelujah. So this is good. Not your neighbor and say, this is good. Say, this is good. This is good. Now, Rakesh said this. Rakesh said, revival is messy. And I didn't know what revival being messy. I knew it was messy. I didn't know what it meant. Now, I thought when it meant messy, that I thought it would be like, you know, messy around the place. And people will be falling down. And people will be, um, people will be, um, um, you know, rolling on the floor and other people will be offended that people are rolling on the floor. But I learned something hosting revival for seven months. Revival being messy can also be attitude. So revival being messy is sometimes in the, in the spirit-filled atmosphere that we are living in, we become full of pride. You know, we become unteachable. We become uh, unapproachable. You know, and so we think we are holier than thou. And that attitude is wrong. Not your neighbor and say that attitude is wrong. And so and and why churches get affected by revival is that in the spiritual atmosphere, people become messy. People become having the wrong character in hosting the awakening, hosting the revival. And that's where the problem lies. People get touched by the spirit and they think they're so prophetic, nobody can correct them. They'll say, thus saith the Lord. You know, every minister is accountable to another minister and we are accountable to the overall body. Hello, amen. Somebody say yes, somebody say yes and amen. So what we've learned from revival is that we need to make sure that the bigger we grow, the, the tighter we become. Hallelujah. We need to watch one another's back. And we need to say when somebody's, um, you know, so listen to me. We are all prophetic, all may prophesy, but we're all accountable. Okay. So as a church that, that is longing to host revival. It's longing to see a city impacted. We're going to grow tighter. We're going to go closer. We're going to link arms with one another. Make ourselves accountable to one another. So hallelujah. So one of the things I want to say is, listen, okay? If our attitude is wrong, our altitude is very down. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that now. Okay, um, we will have the chicken anointing. We will not do anything but and we will eat worms. That's all we will do. We are called to be eagles and soar, cast the wind of the Holy Spirit, and move forward. We are called to be conquerors of mountains. So now, now we as a church, not your neighbor, say we as a church. We need to now. We need to now build one another up. Now, let me tell you something. In this season, we will be dealing with issues of breakthrough that we need. Hallelujah. So we will be dealing. If you need a breakthrough. Now, let me tell you. Breakthrough is not just financial breakthrough. You need to. If you're losing your temper. That needs to change. Okay. We need to deal with issues of anger within ourselves. We need to deal with issues of jealousy within ourselves. We need to deal with issues of depression within ourselves. Issues of rejection. Because why? Because if we don't, when in the midst of revival, we will not be able to stand. Because that's the very area we're going to get hit at. That's the very area that we're not going to be able, able to stand. Listen, every one of us needs to change. Am I right? Sorry, three people said amen. So, um, um, and Rakesh and I, we've also realized a couple of things. Um, we serve a super, supernatural God. Okay? We do. But we're not superhuman. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, I'm just going to lay a couple of things down. Now, as a church grows, we're not going to be able to meet with everybody. You know, over the last few months, I've received... Enough messages saying people are not able to meet with me. And Rachel has got a quite a bad reputation. Poor thing. She's pregnant. Okay. And, uh, oh, poor. Everyone say, oh. Say, oh. 
Now, but the thing is, I'm not the only, Rakesh and I are not the only leaders in this church. If Matthew and Leah visit your house, that is our church visiting you. I'm not the only anointed one, by the way. Hallelujah. When someone in the church spends time with you and prays, by the way, we have a five-fold ministry. And we have empowered people. And so we're going to really at this time uh, lay down our church government structure so that everyone understands. Like, uh, don't think that because I don't spend time with you, I don't pray for you. We are praying. And uh, we are standing. But one of the things, the best ways to hear the vision of the church is to join our home groups. If you're here only on a Sunday, you might not be receiving everything that's being taught. Hallelujah. Now, do you believe in God? Do you believe he's, he's got wisdom? So he said, he said, Preeti, release the home groups. And if you're too busy, that's your call. But if you want to be built up two years from now, take the time. Make the time. For it's God who's our resource. Hallelujah. Now let me tell you something. Who is responsible for your spiritual growth? Those of you who thought it was me, you're wrong. Hallelujah. I work out. I know I sometimes don't look like it. But I work out. Okay? I work out regularly. Now, if somebody emails me and says, can you work out for me? Does that work? It doesn't work. Otherwise, if it worked, I would be emailing Johnson every week. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, Johnson had a twin brother. According to Kevin, okay, because Johnson, I mean, come here, you won the fitness award for the, come on. Uh, so, so the thing is, if you want to be fit, you have to work out, isn't it? Now, Paul right into Timothy, he said, stir up the gifts. Who should stir up the gifts? Now. As, as pastors, we have taken a decision. Please hear our vision statement. We are not looking to build a mega church. We're looking to build mega people. Amen. Hallelujah. And even like we have taken crazy decisions over the years. Um, we took a bus to Birmingham. How many years ago was that? So about seven years ago, we took a bus to Birmingham so that we can preach on the streets of Birmingham and see who gets saved and plant people in local churches there. And actually, it was during that time that I received a daughter. Rachel came on that bus. And that's how we received that, this daughter. So now, this church, listen, we're not the perfect church maybe you're looking for. Because we don't like these chairs. Okay? So, listen, we're going on these streets next couple of days. And if you're too busy to evangelize, you need to actually figure out what you're doing with your life. I took Saryu, she's from a non-Christian family. When she got saved, the next day I took her street evangelism. Sorry, you want to stand up? She's one of the leaders in the house today. I put flyers in her hand and said, come with me. Okay? So, who is responsible for their growth? I'm making a vision statement. Sorry, who? So, you, you can't blame the pastors. You need to read the word, you need to pray, you need to serve. Now, this house needs people to serve. 
If you look at our core team, they're actually a little bit tired. Hallelujah. J. John said the best thing. He said he serves coffee in his church. We need people to serve in this church. If you're coming here, and again, this is my pastoral duty. How many of you like this church? Then help build it. So into it. Because we want to we wanna bless more people. So into it. Serve. You know, earlier we did all the cleaning in the church. Now we're, we need to actually start cleaning. How many of you like a clean church? Okay, so service starts at 10. Prayer starts at 9.30. Thank you for coming at 9.30. Does this make sense? Hi, everybody. Some people told me about um, prayer. We've got different sets of prayer. The prayer room is one of the core kernels of Capstone Church. Join the prayer room. We've got prayer on Fridays that, um, where's Princess? She's, I saw her. She's downstairs. She's serving. You know, we've got prayer on Friday afternoons. You can join that. Okay? Um, we will have prayer. We're increasing our prayer. So, excellent, isn't it? We have a five-fold structure, um, and so we want to see everybody get involved. All our ministries are within the five-fold. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, um, how many of you don't volunteer, don't raise your hands, for a team in this church? I think you should. At least once a month. Isn't that good? How many, ushering team, would you like some, ushering team, would you like some people to join the ushering team? Anyone interested in welcoming people into the body of Christ? You will be the face of the church. It, raise your hands, there's one. Two, three. See, the, how many of you would like to join the prayer room? Would you like some people? Join the prayer room. Worship team, would you like to train some people? How many of you would like to join the worship team? And listen, the teams are not mutually exclusive. The media team, the service team, all the teams need help. Hallelujah. I know the Father's Feast team needs help to cook, don't you? It's, we need people to cook, right? Cut vegetables. How many of you can cut an onion? Rakesh can't. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so we need volunteers. Um, is this okay that I say all this? If we want to have a healthy house, um, how many of you believe you've grown in the Lord? How many of you believe that teenagers and young adults should help their moms and their dads in the house? Especially at home. Hallelujah. Now turn your Bibles and I'm going to end with this. Um, turn your Bibles to 1 Kings 17. Um, One Kings 17, Elijah proclaims a drought. Okay. Then Elijah said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, therefore shall not be a dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Somebody say, except at my word. How many of you read the New Testament? In the New Testament, it says that, that all may prophesy. One of the things that we want to see in this house over this time is that we actually speak things into existence. That means we're going to take control over the words that we speak. Hallelujah. One of the things that we need in this season is actually holiness. We need to see Galatians 5. 
come into the character to be built to carry the anointing. Am I right? Am I right? Now, how many of you want to host revival? How many want to host revival? Then to host revival, we need the character to carry revival. And, I'm, and this is what the scripture I'm ending with. Now, Galatians 5, turn there. Sixteen onwards, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. If you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is a season where God is molding us into the very image of God. Hallelujah. We as a church are not going to get involved in contentions, envy, idolatry, lewdness, jealousies. But we're going to see one another get built up as a family. We're going to serve one another. We're going to build one another. And this is the message of the house. As much as we are father and mother here, every one of us is family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I am ending with this scripture. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are, in, who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. And this is the vision statement of the church. We're going to walk in the spirit. We're going to be driven by the things of the spirit. And it's not only going to be about me, me, me. But we're going to stand in the gap for this city. We're going to see revival in our generation. We're going to be a church that stands together generation to generation. The fathers and the mothers are going to build up the sons and the daughters. And the sons and the daughters are going to build up their sons and their daughters. And then they're going to build up their sons and their daughters. And this is what we're going to see. We will see revival. We will be a clean church. Hallelujah. We will be a passionate church. And we will be a united church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I just want to say welcome. To the new us. Hallelujah. Things are going to change. And change is good. So that's about it from me. Do you want something to add? Come on, give it a chance. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to be ordaining pastors. Uh, in the next six months. I think we'll have it uh, doing maximum. So uh, it's important for us to ordain pastors. The main reason is that, uh, uh, that we are giving authority to somebody to minister. Like Freethi said, you know, one of the things people are asking is like, uh, you know, you don't get us, but there are going to be pastors in, in every area so that, you know, they will carry the same anointing which is there upon the church and they will be ministering. So, you know, uh, 
we believe that it's important for people to grow, you know. So there's going to be deacons, there's going to be uh, uh, associate pastors, you know. There's going to be different different areas of ministry where people are going to be where, where we are going to attain. So you know, there's an opportunity for everyone to grow over here, wherever you are, in whatever state you are, and and, and we believe that it's important, you know. So we ask you to step in, you know, and step in and and do what. Well, we ask you to <laughs> step in and start serving in whichever area now, you know, so that you, we can move. And next week we have uh, South Hall, you know, and uh, sorry, this week, this week we have, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So we have, uh, what time, what time is the evangelism starting? Yeah, six to seven we have evangelism. The team are going to be there. So we do welcome you. We thank you for coming. Thank you for staying. We want to we want to meet with all of you. You know, whoever wants to come and speak to us, we want to we want to speak with you. And uh, you know, so so let's have lunch together. Let's just let's just stand up. Let's just lift up our hands. Oh Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that that you give us a grace, Lord, to be here. Oh Father, even as we go for lunch, we pray for the food. We bless it. We thank you for this time of fellowship. We thank you that, uh, that you will give us a grace, Father, Lord, to, to move in your power. Lord, we go in the love of the Father. We go in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Amen. Amen.